What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna be absolutely positioning this image block relative to the section so that we can ultimately create this cool logo overlay that sticks to the bottom of the section on all screen sizes. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is upload our logo image to that section. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add an image block and I'll navigate to my logo and upload it to the image block. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be positioning this element absolutely, and we want to position it relative to the section as a whole. So first thing I'll do is I'm just gonna target this one block using its block ID. Now if I right click on the block and click inspect, then that'll bring up my Chrome inspect tools, and I can navigate up to the outermost container of the image block, and here, uh, here's my the outermost container. So when I toggle this open, it has all of the contents of the image. Uh, but here is the outermost container of the image block. And on that outermost container, we have the block ID. So I'm gonna grab that block ID, uh, copy that, and then I'm gonna paste it into my custom CSS window. And the way that you target IDs in CSS is by using a hashtag. So hashtag, then my block ID, then I'm gonna open up some curly brackets and now I can write my CSS between these curly brackets and it's only gonna target this one image element. So again, I wanna position it absolutely. And when you position something absolutely, it allows you to basically control exactly where it's gonna go using the top, right, left, and bottom properties. So first I'll do position, absolute. And right off the bat, it's going to disappear from the page. And that's because we have to give it a width. So I want my logo to be like 150 pixels wide. So that's what I'm gonna start with. And now automatically it pops back up because it has a width now, so it can exist on the page. So setting something to position absolute, it brings it out of the document flow. And right now uh, it's just kind of down here and you might be wondering why it's down there. Like it seems sort of arbitrary. So let's go ahead and give it a bottom zero and a left of zero and now it's behaving really strangely. So uh, we want it to be to the bottom and to the left of zero to get it in the bottom left-hand corner, but instead it's up here in the middle of the section. So why is that? Well, if we go to our Chrome inspect tools, so we're targeting this block element and absolutely positioned elements will be positioned absolutely relative to the nearest parent that also has a position set on it. So um, if we toggle up the DOM tree here, uh, these are sibling elements, so if the arrows are on the same row, then these elements are siblings, and then if it's inside of a toggle, then that means this element is a parent of all these elements. So again, here's our image block, and we're looking for the nearest parent that has a position set on it. So here's our first parent that we're going to want to look at, the column. And if I look here through the, the CSS styles that are applied to the column, there's no position set, so that's fine. So it's not getting positioned relative to the column. If I go up to the row, we can see, ah, okay, so the row has a position of relative. So right now our image block is being positioned relative to this element here. And so you can see it is at the bottom and the left of this element. Now you see there's a little bit of space on the bottom and on the left here, and that's because the image block has padding. So that accounts for that little space, but it is indeed at the bottom left hand corner of this element. So we need to remove that position relative. Uh, and a way that we can do that is to set it its position to unset. So basically that just removes any position on that element. So uh, I only wanna do this within this one section that I'm working in. I don't necessarily wanna change all SQS rows their position to unset. So I'm going to use the data section ID for this section to make sure that I'm limiting the CSS that I'm writing to just this one data section ID. So uh, I'm going to copy the data section ID, and this is how we can target a single section in 7.1. And you target data, I, uh, data attributes in CSS by including the data attribute in brackets. So I'm opened up some brackets here, and I'm pasting in my data section ID. Now I can open up some curly brackets. And now inside of these curly brackets, I'll go ahead and just place my block ID. 
Um, and it's just because this block ID is also within the section. Actually, you know what? We don't even have to do that. I'm not even gonna do that step. Uh, okay, so now we can target the SQS row element and we can set its position to unset and we'll see what happens. Okay, so now the logo jumped, so we know that it's now being positioned relative to some other parent that has a position set on it. So we just have to find what that parent element is. So here's our image block. The row no longer has a position set on it. This parent element doesn't have a position set. This content uh, parent here doesn't have a position set. So let's check out this content wrapper. Okay, so this content wrapper does have a position of relative. So if we hover over it, we can see our image being placed at the bottom of that section there. Uh, so, okay, so we also have to set this element's position to unset. So I'm going to include it before the SQS row and I'm gonna target its class using a period. It's how you target classes. And I'm separating these two by a comma uh, because they're both getting the same styles. So we're targeting the content wrapper and we're also targeting the SQS row element and we're setting their position to unset. And so now it's being positioned absolutely relative to the nearest parent with a defined position on it. And that just so happens to be the section. So here we can see page sections in Squarespace get a position of relative. So that's perfect. So now our image is being positioned absolutely and we've made sure that the nearest parent element with a defined position on it is the section as a whole. So now when we move this image, we're moving it in relation to the section as a whole. So uh, instead of it being on the left, I could make it be on the right. So that's gonna move it over uh, and I can move it to the top right hand corner by setting its top to zero and its right to zero. Now um, it is under the header, so I wouldn't want to do that. I would probably want to, you know, save at least like 50 pixels or something, maybe 80 pixels, so it wasn't covered up by the header. But this is this element is stuck in this position, so it doesn't matter what screen size you're viewing it on. It's always going to be in the top right hand corner. So that's kind of the nice thing about absolutely positioned elements. We don't have to write any media queries or anything like that for different device sizes. It's just totally stuck in whatever position that you position it in. So we want to position it, uh, have an overlay here at the bottom. So I'm gonna give it a bottom of zero. And I'm gonna give it a left of zero. Actually, I'm gonna give it a left of 50% because we want it to be centered. And so you can see it shoots over, but elements are positioned from their top left-hand corner. So the left-hand side of this element is 50% of the way over, but we want the middle of the element to be positioned 50% of the way over. So what we have to do is we have to move this element back 50% of its own width. So the way we can do that is with a transform translate, and I'm gonna move it back 50%. And then we also wanna move it down 50% on the y-axis. So I'm gonna move it down 50%. And I just have to spell transform right. There we go. Okay, so now the element is moving back 50% of its own width and down 50% of its own height. So it's like perfectly centered now on the border of the section. The problem is the section below it is over overlaying our icon. So the way that we can bring our logo to the front is by changing the Z index, um, just giving it a Z index value of at least one. And so now our logo is showing and it's perfectly stuck there in the center. Um, so that's really awesome. And we don't have to write any media queries here. Now, if you wanted to do this on other sections, basically you would just uh, have to add the data section ID here of another section. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say I also want to uh, well, let's say I want to add something to the top of uh, this section here. So what I'll do is I'll first, I'll target the data section ID. And to keep it or organized, um, 
I can label this. So this will be the home page uh, first section logo overlay. And that's for all of this CSS. And we can copy that. And this will be for the last section. Home page last section logo overlay. So let's say we want this section to have the logo be overlaid at the top. Um, I'm going to copy the data section ID for this section and we'll place that between the brackets instead. And now we just have to update the block ID. So first I'll add the image to the page. Perfect, and now I just have to update the block ID. So there is a handy uh, Chrome extension, it's the block identifier plugin. And so if I click that button, it automatically brings up the block ID and you can just click on it to copy it to your clipboard and then you can paste in the block ID. So I recommend that, like once you understand the basics of CSS, then I recommend using that as a tool. But um, if you're just starting out, a lot of people rely on it too heavily and they're not writing the most correct CSS because they're just you know targeting a bunch of block IDs. So if you're more experienced, it's definitely a great tool. But if you're newer, I recommend clicking on the image and going in and getting familiar with the template structure and then finding the block ID manually. So here's the block ID. So now it's positioned at the bottom, but in this case, we can position it at the top and we want it to be moved up negative 50% on the Y axis. And now it's, you can see is overflowing the sections above perfectly just like that. So um, it just depends on how you wanna organize this. Um, so if you find it's easier just to duplicate all of the CSS here, uh, then you can do that. One thing that you could do to cut down on the amount of CSS and you know, do this with caution because the reason I like to limit the CSS that I'm writing to just the single data section ID, it doesn't seem to have any structural change, but you don't necessarily want to do it for every section on your site. But if you're going to be doing a lot of overlays, it might be easier and it will cut down on your CSS. If instead of targeting the data section ID, you just target all sections on the site and set the content wrapper in a row to a position of unset. So instead of just targeting a single section, we can target the class of page section, which every section on the site has. So if I toggle this section closed, we can see the next section also has a class of page section. So all, all sections on the site have a class of page section. So instead of just limiting this to this one section, I could just target all page sections, and then I don't have to duplicate this every single time. All you'd have to do is set up a new block every time you want it to uh, ha be an overlay. So you can see it doesn't seem to change anything on the site as I mentioned before, but you know, make that change with caution because who knows what if it would break anything in the future, but right now it seems to work just fine. So this now we can change this to be our homepage overlay and this allows for absolute positioned elements. So this is now just allowing us to position these blocks wherever we want them to. So that cuts down on the CSS a little bit, not having to uh, repaste this every time. One thing I forgot to mention is it does kind of mess up when you go into edit mode. Uh, your block is going to be positioned over other blocks because it's actually being positioned relative to uh, the drag and drop overlay of the editor. So it makes it really difficult to update content because again, it's overlaying other blocks on the page. So we only want this block to be positioned absolutely when the Squarespace site is not in edit mode, when it's not actively being edited. So there's different states uh, that the editor is in. When your site is live, then it doesn't get any class added to the body. But when the site is in edit mode like this, like I have the editor open, then it get the body gets a class of SQS edit mode. And then when I go to actively edit and I'm like actually in the drag and drop editor, then the body gets a class of SQS edit mode active. Uh, so I could find that. Here we go. 
SQS edit mode active. So basically what we can do is we can target the, the site and when the site doesn't have that SQS edit mode active class added to the body, then we know the site isn't actively being edited and we can make sure that this CSS doesn't apply. So the way that we'll do that is um, I'm gonna write body and then I'm gonna use the not selector and I'm gonna target that SQS edit mode active class and then I'm gonna make sure that all of my block IDs that I'm targeting to absolutely position elements are within the curly brackets for this body not SQS edit mode active selector. And so now the uh, these blocks are gonna be positioned absolutely except if you go to actively edit the page and then it'll just show up as the normal block again. So that's a nice way to not impede the drag and drop functionality that Squarespace has um, and to only apply the CSS when the page is not actively being edited. But that is how you can position elements absolutely relative to a section as the whole and create cool overlays like this.